Hey guys, welcome to another Game Fruit tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to get your game on a phone or tablet. Once you've got your game ready to go, you'll need to open the mobile sidebar. If you can't see it, click on your profile image, then click on beta testing and mobile preview sidebar. Click on the phone icon to open the mobile preview sidebar, and then click on the App Store or Google Play button to get the Game Fruit app on your phone or tablet. Back in Game Fruit, click Generate Code. Open the app on your device and type in the code. Now you can play your game. Something you may notice about your game is that the resolution doesn't fit inside your phone screen. You can change the resolution for your game in the game properties sidebar. 768x432 works well enough for the classic template. But you might want to use a higher resolution like 960x540 or even full HD 1920x1080. Now you'll notice that I couldn't control the game. What I need to do is get some touchscreen controls working. To demonstrate this, I'll grab the touchscreen D-pad controls pack from the marketplace. Create a new layer above everything for the D-pad control buttons, and then find the D-pad buttons in the game object sidebar and place them in your level near the top left corner. To make sure that the buttons will fit inside your screen, temporarily change your world size to match the resolution. Make sure you note down how big your world size was so that you can change it back after this. This gives you a good indication of how much stuff will fit inside your game screen. So now you can rearrange the buttons until they're positioned correctly. Once they look good, don't forget to set the world size back to its original values. Now we can go back to the mobile sidebar, generate another code, and test out our brand new touchscreen controls. These touchscreen controls are designed to work with GameFruit's default characters, but what you can do is if you've built your own game, you can go and edit the script of one of your characters, and I'll show you the script blocks you'll need to use to receive commands from the D-pad. The first thing we need to do is allow this game object to be targeted by the D-pad. We'll use the add tag block to do this. The tag that the D-pad is looking for is player. Now to move this game object around, I've been using when the player presses and when the player releases keyboard keys. Now to convert these over to receive messages from the D-pad, I'm going to have to go to events and grab the when message is retrieved block. The messages that we can retrieve from the D-pad are all in capital letters start underscore up, start underscore down, start underscore left, and start underscore right, as well as start underscore action. And those messages are to start movement left, right, up, and down. Now to stop movement left, right, up, and down, you'll want to use the messages stop underscore left, stop underscore right, stop underscore up and stop underscore down as well as stop underscore action. Now I've got all the message receive events that I need so I can drag the blocks out of the original event and place them inside the new events. So now instead of pressing the left key to trigger the left movement I'm receiving start underscore left from the d-pad to make the game object move to the left. You can make sure it works by using your mouse inside Game Fruit. Then you can go ahead and get it on your mobile device. Now, if you don't want to use the D-pad, you can create your own touchscreen control script. The important blocks you need to know about are the event block, when stage is pressed pointer. Now, this event detects when a mouse click or a finger touch happens on the screen. And the touch section inside Sensing has a bunch of useful blocks as well for keeping track of fingers or finding the position of fingers. This is useful because I'm going to grab the X position of the finger pointer. Now this local variable is created whenever I use the when stage is pressed pointer event block. And I can use those Sensing blocks to grab the X and Y position of the finger pointer. What I intend on doing here is setting the velocity of this game object 
to whatever the difference between its position and the finger pointer is. So when you touch the screen, if the game object is really far away from your finger, it's going to zoom towards it. So the blocks should be set velocity x to the x position of the finger pointer minus x position of myself and set velocity y to the y position of finger pointer minus y position of myself. This is a really simple demonstration of getting your own touchscreen controls working. Hopefully you can make something a little more sophisticated. Now when you're ready to go pro you'll want to get your game up on the Apple App Store or on the Google Play Store. Now everything else I've shown you today is totally free on GameFruit, but this is GameFruit's one paid feature, so you'll need a pro account. With a pro account, you can click publish and choose either export to Android or export to iOS. You need to make sure you give your app a name, choose an orientation, either portrait or landscape, and upload an app icon. This needs to be a PNG 1024 times 1024 pixels. Click continue to review the settings and then click get apk file or get ipa file to start generating the files on our servers. After a few minutes the file should be ready for you to download. Once you've got the files you'll need to go to the google play site or the apple developer site to get your developer account sorted and start the app submission process. The links to those sites are available in the information below. Good luck!